He calls his company Amazon.com, Earth's biggest bookstore. In 1994, Jeff Bezos quit his job and launched Amazon.com out of his garage. Within 30 days, Amazon was doing $20,000 a week in sales. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Amazon is now one of the largest, most profitable companies in the world. In 1996, two college students started a research project that would become Google, a website that would change the way we access the internet and information forever. And it started in, you guessed it, a garage. I'm challenging you right now to quit your day job, grab a couple of friends, and start the next big company in your garage. All it takes is hard work, right? When we want to be successful, the obvious thing to do is to look at the people who succeeded. It's easy to find those people. They're the ones writing the books and giving the cool TED Talks and saying the motivational quotes that we put as our phone backgrounds. But what about everyone who failed? What's their story? Did they just not work hard enough? The most consistent thing I hear successful people talk about is the importance of hard work and inner drive. They say that they won because they wanted it more. They say that they outworked the competition. Zoom in, I outworked you. I'm not discounting this. This may be 100% true. They probably did outwork the competition. But this is only a piece of the puzzle. What about all of the other factors that were involved in that person's success? What if they don't know? And if they don't know, then how do we know what we're missing? Failure is silent. We can't hear from people who failed because no one wants to seek them out. No one reads the news article about the guy who lost everything because his business went under. No one talks about the girl who moved back home after failing as a writer in LA. This is survivorship bias. Survivorship bias is the tendency to focus on those who survived versus those who did not. Did Amazon, Apple, and Google succeed because they had good ideas and worked hard? Sure, but this isn't all of it. This may not even be half of the equation. One of my heroes is Christopher Nolan. Nolan's first film is called Following. It was filmed over a year with almost no budget. He wrote, directed, and shot the film. It was a ton of hard work. He sent the film off to film festivals where it won multiple awards and massively helped him in creating his next film, Memento. We know what happened after. Damien Chazelle is another hero of mine. He was able to scrounge enough money to make a film while he was in college. Then later on, he was able to make a short film called Whiplash, which led to him receiving funding for the feature, where this man won an Oscar. We know what happened after. These two made it by working hard and making good films off of extremely tight budgets. I want to write and direct. Is that all it takes? I want to follow the exact paths of the people before me. It worked for them, right? Why couldn't it work for me? Maybe it could. But the problem is that the world is constantly changing. Places like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, even YouTube have changed everything. I have no idea what the world will look like in 10 years. I have no idea what platform will be the best to tell stories. This is when I had a scary thought. What if the only thing that binds successful people together is that they were lucky? This sounds horrible, right? Because we would have no control over our success. But what if luck wasn't some superstition, but could be psychologically understood? What if luck could be controlled? A psychologist by the name of Richard Wiseman decided to do a study on luck and found that people who consider themselves unlucky tend to be narrow-minded. They're usually afraid of the unknown and afraid to take chances. Lucky people, Wiseman found, were much more open-minded. They failed more, yes, but they experienced more and tried more things, allowing themselves to be in the right place at the right time for that golden opportunity. It's not about being right every time. It's about trying new things and being open, so that eventually you can see that great opportunity when it comes and take advantage of it. If we can put luck in that perspective, it gets less scary. There are things that can be controlled. My work ethic can be controlled. What I learn can be controlled. My ability to be flexible and to allow goals and paths to change can be controlled. I say all this to say that people who succeeded don't have all the answers. They may not even have most of the answers. If we are going to succeed in a world that's constantly changing, we need to seek out people who failed. And we must guard ourselves from the idea that we must be the best that ever was or we won't try at all. Instead, we should focus on challenging ourselves to be a cut above the rest, to keep our eyes open and to take full advantage of opportunities when they come our way.
I think a lot of people feel this enormous pressure to achieve this millionaire, billionaire status somewhere in your 20s, 30s, 40s. It is very difficult. It is for very few and far between.